Brothers and sisters, greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Tim Philobom here at Zora Lutheran Church in Perrysburg. And it is again a delight to be with you for worship, even though we're worshiping on such distanced ways with masks and all the crazy COVID stuff, it's still be to, good to be together. And the, and the presence of Jesus surrounds all the wonderful technology and all the wonderful people who are engaged. So it's good to be together. We, uh, if you'd like to join me in a moment of confession, here is, uh, I, I begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy w Spirit. Here are some words that you may wish to join with me in. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We, are, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own way. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God hears the cries of all who call, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus, here's the promise. Your sins are forgiven. Led by the Holy Spirit, live a new life in the awesomeness and grace of God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. However, we cannot rely on our own abilities so grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Good morning, friends in Christ. This is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. It's wonderful to be here with you today, right here from the sanctuary to hear the Holy Word. So I'd like to start with Psalm 145. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Our gospel lesson for this morning is the gospel of Matthew chapter 20. Glory to you, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired, about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual day wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I always think about what a sermon should be titled. And today, if I were to title this sermon, I would say, We have a God of surprises and 
generosity. Yes, we have a God who gives us unexpected blessings. As the psalm today says, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. All these words that I just said, they are telling us the character of our loving God. This is the God whom we believe in. Today's gospel story, Jesus told a parable. You probably all know what a parable is. It is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus told these stories to people so that they could relate to them because these are like everyday common things that they are aware of. You know, parables have been going on for a long time, not only Jesus telling these stories, but also in the Old Testament there are parables. And scholars and rabbis and teachers and prophets, they tell stories in a fashion that people will be able to relate to them and then they'll be able to think about the story, wonder about the story, they may even wonder what actions they should take because of this particular story, this particular teaching. So today's story, boy, it is a surprise. Today's story, today's parable that Jesus is telling, where the last will be first and the first will be last, he is telling this story so that we can understand that we have a God of surprises and generosity who is a blessing to us. And remember what I said, this is the God we believe in. This parable, some people love it because it shares what a gracious God we have. And some people don't like this parable. They say it is unfair. So the story begins talking to us about a landowner. And this landowner, this landowner represents God. And he goes out to get workers, laborers that he is hiring for the day to work in his vineyard. So the vineyard is possibly representing believers in, in the Lord. So you've got the landowner who's God, the laborers, the workers who are the believers, the servants helping helping the landowner, and then you have, you have this story that is sometimes hard to understand. This landowner, he went out very early in the morning, dawn, maybe right when the sun rose, and then he went out at nine, and he went out at noon, and he went out at three, and he found people all those times to work in his vineyard. And we heard that it was a long day, and they were scorched by the heat. They were probably hot and sweaty, and they worked hard for that daily wage that they were promised. This landowner also goes out at 5 p.m., and he sees people still waiting in the marketplace to be hired. And he wonders, why are they there? Do you ever wonder, why are they there? Is it possible that no one else would hire them? Were they too old? Were they too sick? Were they injured? Were they new to town? Nobody knew if, how they would work and they didn't have experience. Could they have possibly been a troublemaker? Might they have had no one who could speak a good word for them? But guess what? The landowner says, come. So they came and they also worked certainly not as long, they came in that last hour. When it came time for the daily wage, he said to his manager, the last will be paid first and the first will be paid last. And surprisingly enough, our generous landowner, who we believe is our generous God, he paid those folks that he brought in last the same as those folks that he brought in first. I have to tell you, some people don't like this parable, and some people love this parable. How might you think about this parable? 
You know, we can look at it a couple different ways. One of the things I thought of immediately this week is, is when I was a little kid, our family, I had a lot of cousins, we would play Red Rover, Red Rover, send so-and-so right over. And I can tell you, being one of the younger cousins and being the girl cousin, I had to wait and wait and wait to be picked, to be on one of the teams, to play Red Rover, Red Rover, send Cindy right over. I know how uncomfortable it is to not be chosen until the end. Finally, I was chosen, and when I was quite young, I probably wasn't the best one on the team. I'm sure you've had experiences like that. Maybe it was a neighborhood ball team, and you weren't the one picked to be on the team you wanted to be on, and maybe you were picked last or second to last. That's a hard thing. Or maybe it was in gym class when you would do square dancing. I don't know about you, but I always remember we would pick a partner, and I always felt so bad for the last couple people who got picked as they were waiting and waiting, and I'm sure in their minds they were saying, please pick me, please pick me. This landowner did go out, and he did pick the people who were still waiting to work on that day. You know, in those days, you might only work one day at a time and you get a daily wage, and that might be exactly what you need to feed your family for that day. So when I look at this generous landowner, I look at our generous God, our generous God who created us and who loves us. And you know, there are some of us who come to believe in God, who come to have faith in the Lord, who develop a relationship with him, who pray with him, who read the Bible and learn stories about Jesus, about the promises of God, about the kingdom of God. We learn about God's grace, God's mercy, God's love, God's healing, and we receive comfort from what we learn. And some of us, we do that from the beginning of our lives as a little child. So we are kind of like those workers who got picked early in the morning. We have the privilege of knowing the Lord God all our lives and to spend time with him and, and to receive his loving care and kindness and generosity and blessings. Then there are those who don't get to know him for a long, long time, for whatever the reason. Even though God created them, they don't have a relationship yet with him. They are not serving him. They're not spending wonderful time with him. This might happen to a person finally when they reach the age 30, or 40, or 50, or 60, or 70, or 80, or 90. I heard about a woman one time who came to know the Lord when she was 90. And everyone was so happy for her. She finally got to know the Lord's love and mercy and grace and generosity. And everyone was happy for her. I heard that she said, oh, had I known the Lord sooner my life could have been so much more fulfilling because I would have known that I have a Lord who loves me, a Lord who is with me always, someone who I could lean upon for strength in my difficult times, someone who could have comforted me and gave me hope when I needed it the most. These were her thoughts. Other people in the background might have thought, here is this 90-year-old woman. Now, I'm kind of comparing it to the gospel story today. Here is this 90-year-old woman, and she is going to get the benefits of our loving Lord, and she didn't even come to believe in him until the very 11th hour of her life, the very last hour. But as I look at this particular parable, I know that we have a God who loves us, who cares about us, who has compassion for us and mercy for us, 
He gave us his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's how much he loves us. He gave us Jesus who died on the cross. And we have the ability to know Jesus, to sing with Jesus, to pray with Jesus, to receive Holy Communion, Jesus, body and blood. We have those privileges. Some of us have had those gifts our entire life. This woman who is 90, she finally gets them. She finally knows the Lord. She's grateful. Some people can't understand how God can offer those gifts. The same gift, I'm talking salvation now, to that person who comes to him in the 11th hour. Well, my hope is, as you hear this story that Jesus tells, that no matter when we come to be with the Lord, the Lord is generous and kind and merciful. And whenever we come to the Lord, so I don't know about you, have you come to the Lord yet? Or do you have others in your family, in your neighborhood, in your workplace, have they come to the Lord yet? I think it's important for us to share with others our experiences of the Lord so they too can come to the Lord. It's never too late. Our Lord loves us and cares for us always. So think about this story, and I hope you think about it in a way that is, wow, we have a generous God who blesses us all. Verses like, what's going on here? That just ain't fair. I'm glad we have a God who cares about every individual, every one of us. Remember what I said earlier. We have a Lord who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Abounding. And Remember what I said, what would I title this sermon? We have a God of surprises and generosity. This is the God we believe in. This is the God who loves us, and this is the God whom we love too. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, and God bless you.
it is a great gift for us to be able to share of our resources with those who are in need. Let us pray. Awesome God, thank you for the gifts you have given us. We give them to you freely and with joy because of the awesomeness of your blessing. Help us, O oh Lord, always to be generous and grateful. To you be glory forever and ever. Amen. This morning, just a few people to keep in mind. Uh, Lisa Jager Bernheisel, Pastor Lisa in Cincinnati, is doing quite well, but still continuing in her cancer journey. We hold on to Dale Mosier, presently at home, and, uh, and uh, continue to lift up all those who are in need. Today, this being Sunday, today at, at, from, at six o'clock tonight at Woodlands Park, in Perrysburg, for those of you who are able to gather, we're having a Perrysburg hymn sing. There will be places for us to come to be distanced, to be masked. There will be a band. We will sing all sorts of awesome hymns. In addition to that, hot dogs will be sold by the people who are gathering funds to build an inclusive playground for all children here in our town. Six o'clock, Woodlands Park. So with that, let's pray. Holy Jesus, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you for the, the fall and the, the autumn and the colors and the coolness and the change of season. In all the changes, Lord, we know that you are there. You are the one constant. Bless us in these times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all those in, in fire areas out west and those in flooding areas down south and all those who are in ravages of nature. We pray for all who are in hospitals and nursing homes and give you great thanks and praise for first responders and fire and police and, and technicians. Bless them, Lord. Bless all your people with healing and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We especially lift up Pastor Lisa and Dale and Jan and, and all those who have who, have, who need your healing grace. We especially lift up this congregation 
and all who proclaim your love. Bless us that the world may know your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we come closer to the election, Lord, we ask your blessing on our president, our governor, our mayor, and all elected officials, and all those running for election. Bless them, O Lord, with your guidance and your wisdom, and heal this land, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting only in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.